Hi, I'm Colin Taylor, and I work on PyTorch at MetaAI. Today, I'd like to introduce PyTorch's newest domain library called TorchRec. TorchRec is a library for producing modern recommendation systems in production, particularly those with large embedding tables. And today, I'd like to give, introduce a brief tutorial of TorchRec using a Colab notebook. So first, a little bit of background. Frequently, when building recommendation systems, we want to represent entities like products, pages, or users with embeddings. For example, see Meta AI's Deep Learning Recommendation Model, or DLRM. As the number of entities in this embedding table grows, the size of these tables can often exceed a single device, such as a GPU or other accelerators, memory. A common practice is to shard the embedding table across devices, enabling a type of model parallelism. To that end, Torchrec introduces its API called Distributed Model Parallel, or DMP. Like PyTorch's Distributed Data Parallel, or DDP, DMP wraps a model to enable distributed training. However, unlike PyTorch's DDP, which replicates the model across devices, Torchrec shards the sparse parts of the model across devices and then uses DDP to replicate the dense parts across devices. So a couple of notes on the installation process. Here we're going to be using Py a local Python kernel, um, but this is runnable in the Colab runtime. If you're using Torchrec, we re do require Python 3.7 or above, as well as CUDA 11.0 or above. And we do highly recommend using CUDA, particularly because Torchrec uses the library FBGEM, which is also open sourced by PyTorch. FBGEM is a collection of CUDA kernels, and this is part of what helps PyTorch, Torchrec train efficiently and quickly, as, as well as inference. So skipping the rest of the installation, today we're going to go over a few key pieces of Torchrec. First, the nn.module embedding bag collection. Second, the distributed model parallel API. And finally, the data structure key jagged tensor. So first of all, we're going to set up our distributed environment. And we're going to be using the torch.distributed package. If you're not familiar with that, please check out this tutorial. Here we're going to be using a single rank corresponding to our single GPU in, inside of our Colab. So let's go ahead and run this block. Um, we're going to be importing Torch, Torchrec, and Torch Distributed. Uh, we're going to have a world size of one representing our single device, which is, na which is named rank zero. And notably, we're going to be initializing the process group using the nickel backend. And the nickel backend is what allows the collective communication calls on the NVIDIA GPUs. In a quick note, here we're using a A100 GPU. If using a below a V100 or an A100 GPUs, you'll need to either use the glue backend to run on CPUs, or alternatively to compile to compile um, FBGEM with the appropriate CUDA architecture. So let's get started with our model authoring. PyTorch represents embeddings through the nn.embedding and nn.embedding bag modules where embedding bag is a pooled version of embedding. Torchrec extends these modules by creating collections of embeddings. We use the embedding bag collection here to represent a group of embedding bags. So let's take a look at what this looks like in code. Let's run this block. We're going to be instantiating an embedding bag collection with two different embedding bags. The first, the user table, and the second, the, the first, the product table, excuse me, and the second, the user table. Each have an embedding dimension of 64, with an embedding size of 4096, representing the product feature as well as the user feature. And note how these are allocated on the meta device, which tells Torchrec not to allocate memory for these embedding bags quite yet. Now we're ready to map, wrap our model with distributed model parallel. This is going to do a couple of things. First, it's going to decide how to shard the model. It's going to collect the available sharders and come up with what Torchrec thinks is the best sharding plan of the optimal way to shard the embedding tables, i.e. the embedding bag collection. Secondly, it's actually going to shard the model. This includes allocating memory for each embedding table on the appropriate device. So let's go ahead and run this. This is actually going to be allocating uh, memory on the, on the GPU. And in this toy example, we have two embedding tables and a single GPU, so Torchrec will place both on the, on the GPU. In printing out both the, the model and the, and the sharding plan, here we have the embedding bag collection with both tables 
wrapped by distributed data parallel, wrapped by distributed model parallel. And since this is a single, on a single device, this can be wrapped by distri distributed data parallel on both, for, on both of the embedding tables. So before we jump into the key Jagged Tensor, let's take a look at how vanilla PyTorch embedding bag and how to query it. So embedding and embedding bag both use input and offsets to query it, where input is a single dimensional tensor containing all the lookup values. And offsets is also a single dimensional tensor. However, this represents a sequence of a cumulative sum of the number of values to pull per, per example. So in this simple example, where we have a single embedding bag of product, and we have three examples here. The first example has two product IDs, 101 and 202. The second has no product IDs, and the third has a single product IDs. We can represent this through the following, um, the following code. First, we're going to instantiate our embedding bag with 64 dimensions and 4096 embedding size, as up before. And we're going to construct we're going to construct the input and offsets tensors with off input as a single dimensional uh, sequence of three values, 101, 202, and 303. And the offsets again tells which example is indexed by which, which example's values are indexed by which example. So the first, the first example has two minus zero or two values in it. The second example has two minus two or zero values in it. And the last example, the rest, is the third example. So this is what the output of our um, two-dimensional tensor will be. That's inner dimension of 64 dimensions, outer dimensions of three examples. So now we're ready to introduce the key jacket tensor. So now that we can query multiple features that are, that are jagged, we, we, we use this new data structure. So this is used to represent an arbitrary number of entity IDs per feature per example. So let's take a look at how this looks. Here we, in addition to the product IDs, we also have user IDs, three users here. The first user has two products, the second user has, has zero products, and the third user has a single product. This query will look like the following. We instantiate our key jacket tensor with two keys, both product and user. The first, the, the values indicate the sequence of products and users. So here we have 101, 202, 303, 404, 505, and 606 in that order. And the lengths are the number of IDs per feature per example. So the first feature example has two different IDs. The next feature example has zero. The next has a single one. And all of the users have a single user per example. So we can run this block. And we can look at the output of our key jagged tensor. And finally, we're ready to actually query our model with the key Jagged Tensor mini batch. And one quick note here, the batch size is inferred to be the length of the lengths divided by the length of the keys, or in this case, six divided by two is three. So let's go ahead and run this block. And the resulting lookup will contain a key tensor, also new to Tordrek, where each key or feature contains a two-dimensional tensor of, of size three by 64, the batch size of three and a 64 embedding dimension. So that's all for our Tortrek example. For more resources, please check out our DLRM example. This includes multi-node training on the Critio terabyte data set on PyTorch's canonical DLRM model. Thank you.